So what happens next? Now that the villains are allowed to escape? Yet again. Exactly what you think. Everything goes to shit. Caraway called the poker game early this week, huh? There is zero reason for anyone to say this at this point. The teachers have clearly been gathered up for some time already. This is the first comment anyone would make. No one would wait till the cards are dealt to state this fact. This is not how people interact. This is yet again, as you know, writing, and it's the quickest way to pinpoint whether the writer respects their audience. Never allow these kinds of lines to slip into the final draft. Exposition can be made engaging with skillful dialogue. Must be because the triad is away on their secret mission. Well, at least it gives me the opportunity to clean you out, Red Bud. Bring it on, honey. You'll be going home wearing a potato sack tonight. Sorry for keeping you all waiting. I've brought a special brew to toast the end of the term. Uh -huh. Shots, no, everyone? Say no to that. It's been a good run. I thought I asked for poison. We're not supposed to draw attention. If you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. Do not trust Olive for anything. She is a pussy in both senses of the word. And would you look at that? Caraway gets captured and dragged all the way to the basement, somehow, without anyone noticing. The show doesn't even bother to show how the villains managed to defeat him. Olive glares at him in the office, and now they are here. Offensively lazy storytelling. Attention students of High Guardian Academy. Your attendance is required at the Forge for a mandatory assembly. Any students who are absent will risk failing the term. The school has an intercom system. Or there is some kind of spell equivalent. That might have been useful for alerting the teachers. There is a shape-shifting assassin on the loose. Stop drinking and gambling on school grounds, you useless pint brains. And help me catch them. Do not trust anyone. Why would he call students to the- It's not, Caraway. Let's get our weapons. No, 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 no! <coughs> I'm... I'm doing my best to remain calm. If you know that it's a trap, because it is obviously a trap, then why are you letting all of your friends and fellow students walk straight into the trap? You have no way of knowing that Mandrake is going to pull a Bond villain moment and lock everyone inside a slow-cooking death trap. For all you know, he will instantly vaporize everyone, as well as he should. You allow everyone to walk into their deaths while you go get your weapons. And that's all well and good. Except you also change your attire. You waste precious time getting changed. These costumes give you no advantage in a fight, you senseless paint guzzlers. These are the heroes of our tale. The future guardians of this realm. Looking cool for the final fight is more important than warning everyone about their impending death. This is absolutely abhorrent. These four are disgusting. Their souls are empty. Any normal person would simply follow their instinct and alert everyone about the danger. You wouldn't even think. You would do it as a reflex. Tell us a lot about the people making this crap now, doesn't it? The girls. The girls aren't in there. What? Why? They didn't follow your orders. Boss. How the fuck do you not know that? You stood at the doorway, you can see the entire room from the door. What the hell is this nonsense? Why must every single line uttered by these morons be utterly devoid of logic? Fine, we'll lure them to the library. 
Cats first. Why? Why the library? Your most effective method of attack are your magical blades. Lure the girls into the open courtyard. That way, you can just snipe them with your magic and end this in an instant. Why would you ever pick a location that is the one place in this whole entire school that gives your enemies the maximum amount of shelter from your projectiles? Tactical genius! No one in, no one out! Because you can just do that. Apparently. How about shielding yourself from all attacks coming your way while you're at it? And you know what this sudden suspicious bubble around the academy is going to do? It's going to alert the entire Lingarf. You buffoon. There goes all your secrecy. You are going to have an audience for this mess gathering around the school in minutes. Or at least it would alert everyone. If this universe wasn't populated 100% by uncaring imbeciles. The final battle ensues. Rosemary and Time engage Mandrake, while Sage and Parsley try to put out the fires. And I will give this episode a single compliment. These gauntlets are neat. It's a creative idea, like a fantasy version of a fire extinguisher. Just ignore the fact that many times water is the last thing you wish to splash on open flames. As is the case with oil fires and chemical fires and stuff like that. Simplistic cartoon logic. And it's also stupid that the library has this, but the one place in the academy where students work with open flames constantly, the forge, doesn't have them. But still, this concept is interesting. It actually takes something that's been established before and expands on it. I assume the gauntlets work on spark spells, since Parsley is able to use them no problem. I bet that the official fire department also has these, since they are powerful and nimble to use and are you fucking kidding me? Never mind. Not much to say about the battle itself, it's action, this is High Guardian shite. That equals random sweating, and absolutely no one using their abilities to their full extent. Surprise, motherfucker! You already had her, just get in close before attacking, moron. And spam that Giga Blade, you have no reason not to, just slice up everything until your enemies are mincemeat. And just to inform anyone out there interested in writing cohesive action, do not give anyone the reflexes to deflect arrows. If someone is actually that fast and agile, they are superhuman and they are going to win every single battle they are in. Stylized action is one thing, but this is just ridiculous tryhard edgelord bullshit. It's laughably lame and impossible to take seriously. Where are you? Where are you? Come find me! <laughs> Time, that wasn't me! My first crush, meet by the books that start with the first letter of his dumb name. Clever, Rose. Well... A for Aster. Nice plan. Except that this is not how libraries organize their books. They are organized by category. There are several shelves with books that start with the letter A. Subtle self-reporting from the writer. Maybe browse some actual books once in your life before putting your own pen to the paper, is all I'm saying. You keep him talking. I'll track his voice. So, shapeshifter, what's your favorite color? Uh, do you like cheesecake? What's your name, anyway? Nothing personal, kid. <sighs> For Mandrake. Not as dumb as A for Aster. I'm sorry, kid. I read your diary. Oh, and by the way, you draw swords like dogs. Hey! Always make callbacks to strong material. The fight turns in the girl's favor for good once Olive finally decides to betray Mandrake. 
<laughs> Mandrake, let me do it. Really? Why the change of heart? You were right about me. I've been a mess. Too attached to these four. It's time to free myself. Ah, okay. Use my knife. You actually believe that? You said before that all you need is for us to go with you to which country? I'll do it. There's no need to kill anyone. Mandrake, my plan can still work. If we put out the fires, take the girls, nobody has to die. Don't be so naive. Maybe take your own advice. Olive has been cross with you this entire time, constantly whining how killing people is evil, aiding people looking to spread destruction and kill people on the other hand is fine and dandy, but whatever. Fine, but this is grog shit and you know it! Be a good little kitty and do what I tell you to do. Can't wait to kill him. Oh, what is wrong with you? What's wrong with you? This is my job. You can't! You can't! And why can't I, huh? She is obviously going to betray you. And why isn't time dead already? Why is she a hostage? You are going to kill everyone anyway. Seriously, the only way for these incompetent heroes to win is for the villains to be utterly brain deficient. I also love the fact that Rosemary just stands back and does absolutely nothing while her friend is about to get gutted. The fight escalates as the newly reformed heroic Quintet combine their strength to take down the enemy. Mandrake is no match for the power of friendship and plot armor, so he is forced to retreat outside, with a broom he apparently pulled out of his ass. The primary bestest ever duo take to the skies along with Olive, and leave the secondary duo to sit on the bench for the rest of the match. Lots of flash, not a lot of substance, there's nothing to be excited about. I don't care about any of these characters. I know the heroes are safe. I know the villain is going to lose. So just get it over with. As a desperation move, Mandrake unleashes this massive blast, which once again doesn't kill anyone, just pushes them away. It's powerful enough to crush a brick chimney, but all the girls are fine. And somehow it doesn't affect the caster themselves? From that distance? That is not how explosions work. This is so lame. If the action doesn't follow any kind of consistent laws of physics, heightened or realistic, then the entire thing is just going to look silly. Random stuff happening is not exciting or cool or epic or anything of the sort. This kind of combat is the writing equivalent of slamming action figures together. It's childish and frankly embarrassing. Grown ass people made this. And there are actually grown-ass people who enjoy this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, Sage! I need help! Bruce! Sage! Gravity means nothing in this show. This episode already reinforced that fact. No one is in danger. There are no stakes. This drama is ridiculous. And by the by, cutting your hair is not character development. It's not meaningful. It's a fucking meme. You know what your problem is? You're weak, Olive! Time to die! No, it was him. Uh, lucky guess. Rosemary, don't do this. 
this, sweetheart. I love you. Oh, this is so boring. What else is on? Now then, Greed. How many times am I going to have to kill you before you stay dead? Count again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Rushing or dragging? Rushing. So you do know the difference! We've all had bad days. But we learn. And we stick together. If any of you are a Pinterested, uh, you can follow my fucking asshole on Twitter. This isn't funny. I'm claustrophobic. Yeah, Cal. My strongest magic glass couldn't open the door. But I'm sure your crying will do the trick. Hey, real. Didn't Caraway close the door on us? Yeah. Olive? Where are the inseparables? Not here. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Took you this long to notice the second caraway. Really? Do all the characters' eyes only see what the camera sees? And how nice of you to go out of your way to mention that the explosion spell is useless here. Now if only you had kept that mindset for the rest of the show. Anyway, the secondary gang of idiots escaped from the burning murder room. Amaryllis takes charge. Snap does... something. This might actually work, guys! All right, Snap, you're up! Okay, everyone, let's move them out! <laughs> Inspiring? Also this. Old Magics, you have a sigil spell for a protective shield, right? Good. All of you keep the smoke and fire at bay. You got it. Okay. So there is an entire sect of students using old magic. But I thought that Sage was the only one using old magic. And everyone made fun of her for that. Everything this show tells you is a lie. Watch their strength. used old and new magic together a solid foundation in old magic gives one the potential to merge their strengths a skill you'll learn in time What am I supposed to say? What is anyone supposed to gather from that? Sage pulled a brand new mega laser out of her ass. Good on her? She already could unleash beams of death. What exactly makes this non-lethal blast so special? There is no consistency when it comes to magic, yet the show makes the dichotomy between the two brands of sorcery into a huge deal. New magic can do anything, it has no drawbacks, until it's suddenly chaotic and hard to master when the plot needs it to be. Old magics are ostracized, even by the teachers, until the show suddenly invents this ridiculous concept that new and old work best together. Why would they? What's the benefit? What does it even mean? There is no actual reasoning behind any of this. No philosophy, it's just muddled horseshit happening without rhyme or reason. Everything just works in whatever way the author wishes at that moment. It is impossible to be invested in anything on screen when the story flow is constantly just and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens. It's boring garbage sludge. Sage can do something amazing and unique and super smart and only reserved for select few. 
Who gives a shit? Random anime power-ups. Gotta collect all those tropes and cliches. You know what would have been nice? Had Sage practiced this particular skill throughout the series? Struggle, improvement, success, basic functional storytelling. The potential was set up in the very first episode. Can I hold your Terrasphere? Go ahead. This is gorgeous. Its conjuring powers seem unlimited. I thought it was incompatible with old magic. Aloe's an elf, so her power is merged with mine. Sweetie, she'll learn about new magic and spell theory at school. Let's let them go to bed. The concept is forgotten, Sage never asks about it, and then it's suddenly reintroduced in the finale, given no explanation, and the show acts like this is some kind of culmination of Sage's growth as a sorceress. But all this amounts to his empty spectacle, Unspectacular. In the aftermath of the chaos, everything unfolds exactly as you think. No one is hurt, everyone is fine after breathing Noxus gas, no consequences, everything is just peachy. Mandrake manages to escape, because of course he does. He was unconscious, Parsley and Time were standing right there at the courtyard, but the writers just want him to escape so badly, and thus reality bends to their whim. The tactical genius sneaks off in the guise of one of the firemen. He was laying right there, close to the forest, practically off the school grounds. So he decided to sneak back towards the school, through the yard, murder one of the firemen, steal their uniform, and then sneak back through the yard to escape. What was Mandrake's trademark magic trick again? Oh yeah, shape-shifting. I couldn't make this shit up even if I tried. Oh, and yes, there is a murdered fireman somewhere. I refuse to accept anything else. Good job, Caraway. Good job, Rosemary. Good job, the rest of you. Your incompetence got some innocent soul killed. But there's no time to mull on that. We got to feel sad for the poor academy going up in flames. This wonderful place where hedonism, callousness and victimhood are virtues. Where the teachers try to actively kill their students on daily basis. Whenever they aren't coaching the next generation of psychopaths. What a tragic moment this is. And then we have the aftermath of the aftermath. Hold very still. Do you even know how great you are? Rose. You mixed old magic and new magic perfectly. Combining them felt so right. You know, you're pretty great too. <laughs> nah. Careful, I'm wielding a weapon. Which you do with great competency. I'm serious. You fought out there like a true warrior. You're a natural leader. I... I just wanted to protect the people I love. Rose... We will find her. Together. We will. You are so cool. No, you are so cool. We are both so cool. Yeah, I bet the audience just loves us at this point. We are going to do so much awesome stuff next semester. Winter break starting early. We can use the vacation. Yeah, but I kind of want to get back. I want to learn more, grow stronger, and I think I want to hug my mom. Oh. What? She was stoned last time. I'm gonna hug a plate of Aunt Aloe's food. The whole break. <laughs> Cousin, you found time for a haircut? I mean, I value fashion as much as the next woman, and I love how you're looking right now, but... <laughs> it looks great. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so do your nails. Okay, time to go, Snap. Let's do a quick recap. Rosemary set out to find her mother, never took any steps to find her mother, and has come no closer to finding her mother. Sage set out to learn magic, achieved everything with no trouble, 
and manifest that rare Ultima level skills by simply deciding that she can do that now. Parsley started out by existing and continues to exist. Time started as a loner, learned that friendship is magic, became a loner once again and learned that friendship is magic. Again. She also hated her mom until she didn't. Amarilis started out as a loud bully, then settled on just loud. Snapdragon used to be angsty, then he painted his nails, and now he's fine. What part of that sounds like a story you would ever wish to see play out in the span of dozen episodes? Absolutely nothing of substance has happened. This entire four hours of animated content has been a waste to an offensive degree. This barely qualifies as a story. And just as a one final example of this show's philosophy on writing, take a look at this. Daydreaming about cake again? Uh, is class over? Mm-hmm. It's the Saipeth, isn't it? He's all I can think about. <sighs> Me too. Him and Olive. Sometimes I miss being a kid when we didn't have to deal with all this stuff. Yeah, but at least we're dealing with it together. Always have, always will. Saying that things are happening is not the same as things actually happening. You can claim that events around you impact you in any number of ways, but if it affects nothing in your character or your view on life, if it does not manifest in you evolving as a person, then it is a lie. Take this to heart, all of you who write, all of you who enjoy stories. Do not accept this deception, do not let any author claim they've offered you something meaningful, when in actuality it's nothing but lame nonsense. Sad piano music is not a substitute for cohesive narrative. The fact that something this utterly empty exists as a fully funded, produced, advertised, commercially distributed product is an insult to anyone looking for entertainment, or meaningful storycraft. It is a bad product and a worse story. It is a worthless creation. We had some sick moves yesterday, High Guardian Spice. Because of our names. That's perfect. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to say it? Okay. Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme are herbs, not spices. Isn't this the perfect way to cap off this entire journey? One final dose of dumb. Except not quite, because we still have a post credit scene. No story is complete without a post credit scene. The evil club of evil, see if after their airtight plan somehow managed to fail. And the authorities are no doubt banging on your door any minute now, since Olive is in the custody of the guardians, and she will obviously spill all the beans. FBI, open up! You and your plans are done, whatever those were exactly, undone by pesky kids. Please. Show me mercy! This is Olive's fault! If you give me another chance, I'll kill her and every person in Lingard! Silence! What do you recommend? <laughs> Execution. Honestly thought you were going to get a second season? The utter smugness. After mucking up absolutely everything possible, 
you still believe that this pathetic sequel bait would buy you another round of this crap. One final insult to the audience, no reason to progress the core narrative in season 1, just wank around with your shit oces for dozen episodes, and save all that intrigue for season 2. No thanks, I think we are all quite done here. It feels surreal. I'm done. I'm actually done! Now, I don't see any reason for an overly long, overly indulgent epilogue. The hours upon hours of content speak for themselves. What I will do is give out an enormous thanks to each of you for sticking around for this long. The support, the comments, the likes, the conversation, it's made all of this worth the effort. And of course, a special thanks goes out to the supporters on Patreon. Thank you, Sir Saltsalot, Cyrus Karloff, Crazy Cat, Lone Red Soul, and Katobe. As well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaja Vanderwatt, and Six Stars. If any of you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are in the description. And... One last thing before I go. What comes next? Now that I'm done with this behemoth project. From the start, my main goal has been to extract some value from this colossal failure, for entertainment, naturally, but also to exemplify what not to do when crafting a story, and as a vehicle to talk about storytelling as a whole. It is important to understand why something works or doesn't work, rather than just listing out flaws and praises. So, for next year, I'm gonna flip this around, and instead take a look at something actually enjoyable, and extract all the positive lessons I can find. Are we... still sisters? Nothing is ever going to change that. I'm going to break down the entirety of Arcane with the same format I used for High Guardian Spice. This is one of the most competent pop culture products we've had in recent years, so there is plenty of solid storycraft to discuss. Something to mention is that I am not a League player, so I'll be approaching this from pure storytelling angle, rather than adaptation standpoint. Also, to be clear, I am not aiming for blind kudos. It's a critique, same as with the Spice. If High Guardian Spice does everything wrong, then Arcane does everything mostly correct. One journey ends, another one begins. I hope you'll join me once more. That'll be my main project for the upcoming year. Maybe I'll work an extra thing or two into the mix, but we'll see. Anyway, until then, I'll end things as I always do. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.